this training for safety. First, you got to know why we do this. Um, I think these are uh, a lot of what we do with my 15 years of experience in middle schools and high schools, and now out on my own uh, training teams. Um, I see a lot of lack of education, a lot of uh, we are behind the times. We have we don't have the experts in the high schools and middle schools that need to be there in terms of weight room and strength and conditioning and sports performance. We don't have that. So we have to educate the ones that are in there. And right now we are behind the times. Athletes are changing. Time spent moving and participating in physical activities are going down by the day. Specialization, kids are now, if they're baseball players, they're going to be baseball players for their entire life, which affects their movement patterns, motor uh, skills, and performance. And with the lack of PE on top of that, that creates a big issue. So, Participation has, has dropped by 20%, and yet the injuries tend to increase by the year, 3 to 5%. What that means is we've got problems and we need to fix it. So you got to know how to fix it. So here are some questions to ask. What can we do better? Um, what can you do better to help your team be more successful um, in competition and help them develop as athletes, everybody needs extra athletes. You know, I listen to coaches all the time. You know, we've, uh, I sure would like to have a couple of more athletes. Well, and you can help develop athletes in the weight room. Is your programming evolving and changing by the year? If it's not, you are falling behind the times. Kids are changing with each year, and you better change with it. Why do you need to change if it is successful? Can you prove it? Can you prove the success? Um, can you prove the lack of injury? Can you prove um, the relationship on what is done and what you've done in the weight room and how it's improved performance? That's a really tough question to prove. So you better have the numbers. How do I know that our program is the best that I can provide? And what can I learn that might help our team be better than it was last year or um, last season? Why do, we, why do we need to take the next step? And how do we keep athletes motivated and engaged? Everybody needs to know that. And why is all of this important? All right, so when developing this, I'm noticing the lack of education and lack of skill development with our athletes. We have a enormous job. Teachers, coaches, um, and lastly, weight room coaches have really three jobs that they have to be good at. And two of them involve being hired and fired. That's being a teacher and being a coach. The weight room part of it probably, if you had to guess, would be the last thing to become expert at. So that's where we're having problems with. So you got to see the big picture. The purpose is to create a positive change in coaches, which in turn creates a positive change in athletes and the environment that they're in, which in turn can motivate and engage athletes better. Safety. Let's talk about safety. I think um, this is a, a, a real boring subject for many coaches, but you got to realize uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, the coaches that enforce the safety of whether it's in business or anything, if safety is important, usually a couple of things are related. Number one, planning. If they have safety rules and regulations, usually it's been planned to a T. Um, and that, that, that includes programming, that includes um, uh, jobs, and every rep that is done in the weight room is all planned out and mapped out. 
So that's how it relates to the improvement and the results and the progress of teams, athletes, and success on the field. So organization and management is absolutely critical to the safety and development of those athletes and those coaches. And then the application of the new age athlete, what's different about them from five, ten years ago? Injuries in its relationship to training. That's one of the biggest things that I see coaches not knowing the relationship. I go in and talk to coaches. Coaches say, uh, you know, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any problems with injuries. And then you go and talk to athletic trainers that, oh, well, we had um, MCL, we had meniscuses, we had ACLs, we had um, labrum tears, we had um, lower back stress fractures. We had all kinds of stuff and the coach isn't seeing that relationship between what they're doing in the weight room and the injuries that are being created either in the weight room or even at competition because of what they are training. So two things that we're going to cover, the physical safety, the environment that that athletes and coaches are in, and then the athlete safety, the organization, the application. Uh, A couple of things you need to know uh, on terms of the physical and the environment that athletes are in. Number one, um, you need to be able to check uh, your equipment every, at least every six months, if not more than that. Okay. So if we have three teams that are going in the weight room continuously, and there should be more of that, let's just say it's three. Now we have um, issues with um, who did what and when it happened and when that turn in terms of liability and maybe a coach knew about it maybe a coach didn't know about it and then it turns into a big who's who of what happened exactly in the weight room and in terms of liability and um, causing blame and all of that stuff you got to be able to cover your butt so I, um, I usually recommend a couple of forms this is just something that we created um, and this is nothing big. Uh, I just created this from a um, uh, to-do list from uh, Google Docs from the Sheets category. So I'll go over this really quick. Racks, um, check for loose screws, safeties, all that. So the coach will put in their initials. They would date it. And if there's any issues um, on bad equipment, loose screws, or whatever the check should, should be, they're going to make notes right there. And then they're going to, if they don't know, usually you don't know the age of the equipment. It's probably been there for years at a time. Um, And that's just a guesstimate. So after a certain amount of time, usually the reason why we put that in there is because the equipment manufacturers recommend replacing at a certain amount of time. And if you are making some inferences about this, if the manufacturer recommends replacing at a certain amount of time or amount of years, you can use this as leverage to actually get more equipment in the weight room. So um, this is this can be a really good thing. You can use this as a very positive uh, thing to actually help um, prove your um, your needs and wants into the weight room and how you can get extra and brand new equipment. Um, with with this safety check barbells you can read through all this stuff but it goes through just a general idea of what all is in the weight room and just checking it so the coach will go down and put their initials and then put the date okay and then what they would do the second time around is do the same thing you just add another column and then you you go from there okay so um, on to Oh, Lord have mercy. All right. So, and then, and then the next thing is, I didn't even show you this, is, uh, is the cleaning of the weight room. Okay. This will be the next thing. Um, this has to be done in terms of, uh, we usually put this on the same sheet, uh, because it's, it's really easy to do. You can post this in the weight room, um, just so the coach can go and pull it and make their notes after they clean, they can just initial and go. Um, It doesn't need to be an additional 15, 30 minutes to do it. That's just, it just needs to be a checklist of what all do I need to clean and how do I need to clean it. 
And the next thing is you got to provide these disinfectants and stuff that help prevent staph and MRSA and, and all those issues that, that we see in the weight room that could become a, a terrible um, health issue from, from us. So we have to make sure we're, we're clean and everything is good. To do that, we have to um, make sure it's disinfected at least one time a week or every day during some type of staph or MRSA outbreak. Okay, so um, make sure we, if you don't use Clorox, you can use Lysol, and there are other great products out there. Those are just common stuff that that I've used before, and there are there are safer products that don't dry out your benches. Um, that are uh, a little bit more costly, but can can be um, more effective at the same time, and can help save your um, the surface of your bench and and maybe uh, keep your bars from rusting early. So um, that is uh, all about the safety and make sure that your kids are wearing shirts in there. Um, that's critical. Nobody needs to have you, you know. You got teenagers in there that that have all kinds of um, cuts, acne on in their back, and and things can spread very easily in an environment like that with something as hot and as moist an environment that that a weight room is. It, it's important to kind of keep your uh, keep your shirts on and keep the clothing on so that you can have a barrier there. All right, so how many athletes, and this gets into the rules of the weight room, but how many athletes need to be in there? Um, how many square feet? And it all applies to the facility layout. If the facility is laid out, you can, you can do a really good job of organizing the weight room to make sure you maximize, number one, the coach's effectiveness, because they have to be able to move those athletes around effectively and quickly and safely all at once. Um, if you have a bunch of racks all together, it's really hard to see all these athletes doing what they're supposed to do. So it, it, people get um, caught in between racks. Um, just from facility layout, things can happen where we can't see it. So make sure all these things, when you lay out and, um, or, or, or are going to organize a weight room, all these things are taken into account. Can the, is the coach going to have the view of the athletes? And if they are not, like for exa example, if you have a coach or one or two coaches that are hanging out up here and you have this stretch corner right here, I see this as a big time issue because you, you've got some, some change of, uh, in terms of line of sight. You got where kids could be in a, a particular situation that you can't see. So make sure all that is, is considered and um, make sure the coach has the best view possible so that they can view all the athletes in certain spots. Um, so in other words, there's no, there's no blind spots. There's no hiding spaces because that's when, that's when um, you know, you never know with middle school, high school, and even, even college and university athletes what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. So it's important we have eyes on these corners. Now, if you have another coach and have that coach in one of these corners, then that's great. But many people do not. Many people, it just has one coach. So that's what I tried to plan for. So make sure you maximize the layout. Make sure if you have to, it's really easy to draw up in a Google document um, and and to, to be able to organize all that stuff in terms of how many athletes you have and how to organize and where to organize it. All right, safety rules and regulations. This is something that, that has, I think, has died out, but we need to have this, okay, in terms of liability and um, what we need to be able to do and whether you cover this with the athletes or not. It's got to be covered with the athletes. It can't just be posted. Posted is the first step, and this is the easiest one, okay? I don't like a lot of 
a lot of rules because I think a lot of rules is it means means that there are no rules so uh, no students may use the weight room without proper teacher supervision if you just have that posted that is great okay and that means there's one rule in there you don't go in there without a teacher um, and here's some other ones right here that are that are little there's